Yeah. Yeah, everyone does live in the In the last two weeks, I had another one. There's no one in the state has no view. Wow. Um, before he met Sally, he said it's like he's loving all the songs. Yeah, because we're looking at the family. Um, all right. I think six something. We will go ahead and get started. <laughs> So, we're going to be talking about direct mail. How many people here actually perform direct mail right now? Do any of you guys do marketing through direct mail? Yes, nice, nice. You have, that's not what you want to do. We'll talk about that. <laughs> it, it wasn't as successful, so I'm going to see why you think it's so successful. I think everything's great news. Perfect. Um, so yeah, so let me give you a little intro on myself. So my name is Jeff Lillianfeld. This is my wife, Andrea, here. Um, we're actually my home group agents, so we own the K Grant Group. Um, we started doing real estate about four years ago. Um, from the minute that we started, we were utilizing direct mail, uh, which is a lot of where the success comes from, and we'll talk about that. Uh, we just joined my home group about a year ago. Like a lot of people in this office, it feels like we started at a KW office um, and then slowly moved over to my home group. Um, mainly for the kind of team building approach and how you know splits work when you have a team. Um, so prior to doing real estate, my background is very diverse. Um, I was a management consultant for a while, uh, and then later on got real involved in technology. Um, and kind of everything I've always done has been you know just around marketing and how I can use technology to perform marketing which believe it or not, direct mail actually does play a role in my, my technology marketing portfolio. Uh, so coming out of college, I had a granite company. I later you know, worked for McLadry as a management consultant. Um, about 10 years ago, I bought uh, 14,000 iPhones one year uh, through a company I had called iPhones into Cash and resold them. Uh, and then I ended up joining a, another consulting firm on the IT side called RPI Consultants, um, where I actually continue to have a practice and I have about 20 IT consultants um, doing process automation work. So this is Zach Dumont. Zach is hey Zach's our campaign strategist and I'll let him. Yeah, so you know, I, uh, <coughs> So I was kind of born into an entrepreneurial small business family. My first sale I made was at seven years old in uh, my family winery. The wine-filled chocolates weren't selling too well, so my grandpa decided to employ me and my brother. And it's really hard for people to say no to a seven and eight-year-old trying to sell them stuff. So learned pretty quickly <laughs> that uh, you know if you smile, people have a hard time saying no. Um, I actually got licensed in real estate in California. Um, I was about to start practicing um, with Keller Williams, and then I actually got an opportunity to go and run um, a sales, uh, the sales division for a startup company based in Los Angeles. Um, that didn't end up working out, and so I ended up moving out here to, to Arizona. Um, and just to kind of give you a broader background, um, you know, I worked in, in healthcare, wealth management, insurance, hospitality. All of the companies I worked with all utilized direct mail marketing and had success with it. So when I met with Jeff and you know he was telling me about direct mail marketing, I told him, you know, I've seen it firsthand work not just from real estate but in you know in plenty of other industries as well too. So it's kind of a match made in heaven. So Zach's here to sell. Yes. <laughs> when I say here I mean on this planet. <laughs> so yeah we'll talk a little bit more about our team being the K Grant group and what we've done with direct mail. Uh, generally some strategies to make direct mail work work. Uh, how to combine these two things, right? So getting the, the digital benefits along with direct mail. And then we're actually gonna give you a little demo of the software that we have to allow you to perform these tasks. And then um, for any of you guys that have laptops, if you want, we'll get you involved in actually building your own postcard template. So, sounds difficult, um, it's really not. Do you guys have your own brand or do you go under my home group? I'm not. I'm an outside agent. Okay. Um, anyone in here that uses the My Home Group brand that has a laptop? Okay, sweet. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, 
So a little bit about our group, right? For those of you who just walked in, I'm Jeff Lillianfeld. This is my wife, Andrea. So in addition to owning Wise Pelican, we also own the Cape Grant Group, which is uh, my home group team. So that's how we, we come to be here. Um, so our team consists of myself, uh, really on the back office marketing side. Uh, Andrea leads our client service team, which consists of herself. We have four buyers agents and a transaction coordinator. Um, our model is completely marketing based. What I mean by that is that we've never picked up the phone to call expires or FISBOs. Uh, I was gonna say never gone door knocking, but she went door knocking once in Paradise Valley in 118 degree heat. Uh, sure again. <laughs> that was the last time that ever happened. Um, and you know, we, we knew then, well, you know, that's, that's not really our model. Um, you know, so these are kind of the things that I call prospecting, right? And prospecting works and it, it will get you some, some quick wins. Um, but you know, our model is just more marketing based. Um, which, you know, in my opinion, is kind of a, a more of a long-term strategy, right? And we'll, we'll talk about that more. Um, so in terms of getting buyers, we never utilize direct mail to get buyers, um, at least not directly. The reason being is that you can get buyers for way cheaper online, right? Um, you can use Facebook ads, you can use Google AdWords. If you don't have a lead gen website, I highly recommend that you get one, whether it's Boomtown, Real Geeks, um, any of these you know, types of sites that you can drive traffic to and capture leads is, is awesome. Um, so anytime that we're mailing, we're utilizing direct mail to attract sellers, right? So that does a couple things for us. You know, <coughs> one, you can work with a lot more sellers than you can buyers, which means that we have four agents that work with buyers. We only need Andrea to work with sellers, right? So we keep 100% of the commission from our leads that we generate from direct mail. The other thing that happens is that you can, you end up generating buyers by having sellers, right? Whether it's signs, whether it's they see your number on Zillow, we know how it works. Um, so if you, you know, execute strategies to get sellers, eventually buyers come. Uh, I do have to give a quick plug that we are always in need of buyers agents as we're on the topic. So if you know anyone, definitely send them our way. Um, and with that to say, you know, our buyer's agents, just like we discussed, they don't prospect. So we generate about 20 to 30 leads a day um, on the buyer side. So why is Pelican? I'm actually gonna start at the bottom here because everyone always asks where the heck the name Wise Pelican came from. Um, and so this was really on a flight with my wife Andrea and I drinking wine and trying to figure out what we were gonna name this company. Uh, so we went with Wise Pelican because it's awesome, and you know, <laughs> Pelicans have the capability of delivering mail. Wise Stork wasn't so good. Um, Pelicans can fit more in their beak. Yeah, yeah. They can bolt more. Um, so yeah, so that happened about 18 months ago. Um, at the time that we started it, we said, okay, we're not going to compete with ourselves. We're only going to do this in other parts of the country, right? So we originally launched in Colorado and then in California. Uh, later Florida and so at this point in time we've actually launched in about five states before we then said okay we're done with that that's fine we'll you know make money helping other agents in our area also as we started to you know become friends with title companies and lenders and that sort of thing and we saw that there is so much interest growing around this because you know we we have this platform that we've built so now we do it everywhere, though we've only marketed it still in those five states, and now kind of for the first time, Arizona. Um, so when we first started Wise Pelican, the biggest gap that we saw, and I should mention that this was completely built originally as a tool just to help ourselves, right? So we mail 10,000 homes every month as a baseline. And so we were trying to figure out how to build those lists more efficiently and how to find the right lists to mail to. And so we originally built it as this tool to allow agents to build lists. Well, as Zach starts talking to people and he's like, yeah, you know, you can build these lists and we'll get your 3,000 postcards out. Most agents are like, whoa, 3,000 postcards? Absolutely not. You know, that's not even in the realm, but I do have this house that I just listed and I really want to mail a postcard for it. And I really want to mail a postcard when it sells. And so our early price model was 
you know, like everyone else is, you know, if you look at Tor Factor or anything like that, which is if you're running small campaigns, we have the price way higher per piece because we have a whole bunch of overhead, right? And so it became apparent to us that while our pricing was based or optimized for people that want to do large mailings, the market doesn't want to do large mailings, right? Most agents want to do smaller mailings. And so we had to figure out, okay, how can we do this, you know, where it's economical for the agents and it's economical for us um, in, you know, in that sort of a capacity. And so, you know, with my uh, marketing and software background, I turned to software, right? So what can we do, right? How can we, how can we optimize everything on our end so that agents can mail in any quantity that they want? So that's where Wise Pelican was born. And I'll show you how that works at the end. Um, but in the meantime, I, I did promise you guys some, some strategies when it comes to direct mail. Um, and so I know early on, you know, one of the first things I heard when I asked who here, you know, mails, uh, was, well, I have in the past, right? And so how many times did you mail those houses? Um, I did it for two years. Okay, so you actually, you did mail it monthly? Okay. So one of the, yeah, so one of the biggest things um, with direct mail is, is absolutely repetition. You know, you don't ever want to mail someone one time. If you're going to do it, really you want to save your money. Um, while I highly believe in just listed, just sold, what I generally recommend is that you use your just listed and just sold as a launching point, right? So when you have that juicy listing, that's when you mail them a just listed postcard. When it goes under contract, that's when you mail them an under contract postcard. And then when it goes, when it actually closes, that's when you mail your just sold, right? So really it's a launching point. And from there you can start mailing market updates and rinse and repeat as you get them. So you really wanna have, you know, strong repetition. Call to action is key, right? You don't just wanna send someone a postcard with your brand on it. You wanna tell them to call you to find out what their home's worth. Um, so branding is also key. So that can mean a few different things, right? So especially in my home group, a lot of agents have their own brand, right? You have a team, you have something like that. So if you have that, you wanna really hammer in that brand. If you're under the my home group brand, you wanna hammer in your name, right? And you wanna hammer in your photo. Definitely don't skimp out on going and getting a professional photo taken, especially with my home group, it's awesome because they do it here. So take them up on that. You always want your mail pieces to be very consistent when it comes to the design. So we have a lot of agents that say, oh, well, this time I want to mail something a little different. Well, this time I actually have two listings in the neighborhood. I want to have both those listings on the postcard. You don't want to do any of that. You really want to be extremely consistent because most of your postcards are getting looked at for about two seconds and thrown in the trash. And that happens repeatedly. And that's why people say, well, you know, does direct mail work? Because I know I take those postcards and I throw them away, right? Well, yeah, you do it and you throw it away and you throw it away and just like when someone calls you on the phone, no, I don't need your service, no, I don't need your service. And then there's that one day, oh yeah, I do want to sell my home, right? And that's when that postcard comes into play. The key is that they've seen it 10 times to know that you're the expert, right? It's the same reason why Coca-Cola spends billions of dollars every year putting their name on random outhouses even. It doesn't matter where it is or if it even really has any relevance to you, know, you being thirsty, it's just you recognizing that logo. And that repetition, when it comes time for you to make that order, Coca-Cola is your first thought. So in our instance, we do wanna you know, let people know that we do real estate. So it's funny, when we first started, that was a big mistake that my wife and I made was, we went out and we did the standard, we were like, okay, we're gonna send a spring training calendar, right? And the spring training calendar had our logo on it, but it wasn't obvious to people that we do real estate, right? So it's all about hammering in the fact that you do real estate. And not only that you do real estate, but that you do real estate in their neighborhood. So that can mean a lot of things. So for us, we mail 10,000 postcards, right? Every one of those postcards is specific to the person that we're mailing it to and the neighborhood that they live in. So it says, Andrea Lillianfeld is your Park Scottsdale expert, your Optima Camel View expert, all of that. The platform that we've built allows you to do all of that variable data. Um, you always want to be adding value, right? So that goes back to, you know, you want to be sending market data. You want to send, you know, actual prices. Um, you want to just, you know, repeatedly make sure people know that you're in real estate and that you know the area. 
The other thing is just don't <laughs> overthink it, right? That goes back to having the consistency in design. Don't start thinking that you need to switch it up because this particular time you really need to let people know that it has a beautiful casita, right? Um, whatever you do, keep it that way. Don't, don't change it. At the end of the day, you have to remember that these mail pieces are about building your brand. So what don't we want to do? We never want to mail once, right? Um, once you mail the area, you've got to keep mailing it. If you're going to mail it once, don't bother doing it unless maybe you have a seller that's just like, you absolutely must mail this if you want the listing, sure, then mail it. But if you think you know, you're going to get a personal return and it's going to help you generate future listings, it's not worth doing. Um, you know, there's much less expensive ways to, to get the word out. Um, you know, again, don't change out the, the mail pieces. Keep sending the exact same pieces. So what we recommend is that you have two templates. You have one template that you use for your just listed, just sold, and under contracts. And then you have another template that you, you use for your market update. That way, for one, you're not spending too much time doing it. You can knock these postcards out in less than five minutes. Um, you're not spending a whole lot of time doing it. And then, you know, the other thing is you just gotta have that consistency. So between those two templates, you should be able to mail all the postcards that you need. Uh, don't expect immediate results. You're not gonna mail any neighborhood once. Well, not normally, we just had a buyer's agent crush it on our first mailing. Um, but don't expect immediate results. You know, at, at the end of the day, yes, that does happen, right? Um, but you know, really, it's about building the brand and getting, you know, having something with some longevity. So, how do we figure out who to mail? Um, so, a lot of people don't know. Have you guys ever used Monsoon for pulling mailing lists? Mm -hmm. So Monsoon for free, you can pull down 10,000 property addresses a month. Um, so definitely Monsoon, if you're an agent you know, with Armless, it, it's, it's by far the, the best option for pulling down mailing lists. You can do searching with all the criteria that you need. You can do it by subdivision, all that. Yeah? Can you upload lists that you already have in your system? Yes, you can. Yep. Thank you. Um, so you can pull them there for free. Uh, like I said, you know, 10,000. One key thing with Monsoon is that you get both the address of the property as well as the owner. Now, this is one of the biggest things in determining who to mail. Do not mail the people residing at the address, especially not in Arizona where it's second homes, everyone's a renter. You always want to mail the property owner. Um, you know, why? One, we don't mail for buyers, right? So someone that doesn't own the property doesn't have a property to sell. Two, it is by far these absentee out of state, you're gonna get your best return there because they don't have a brother-in-law that's an agent, right? They're the ones that, you know, they really don't know. And so if you're the one that is consistently mailing them, they're seeing your face, you're the expert. And the other thing is real estate agents are cheap. And so once USPS said, okay, we have this thing called every door direct mail with lower postage, no one pays any attention, they're like, oh, the postage is cheaper, but guess what? That doesn't go to your absentee buyers. So I'd say, you know, what, eight out of 10 postcards you get for real estate or every door direct mail. So all those absentee buyers, they're not getting hit with all your competition, right? They're only getting hit with the ones that are actually taking the time to do a proper mailing campaign, which is list driven instead of carrier route driven. Um, so the other thing that we look at is we want areas with six to eight plus percent turnover, right? But six is kind of a minimum. Um, we, we really want to be at that seven or eight percent. You know, in this area, the metro area here, there are some, you know, unicorn neighborhoods that are at nine or 10 percent. Um, I'll tell you if you're mailing Scottsdale, you're competing with me. <laughs> on those nine or ten percent neighborhoods. All of Scottsdale. Oh, is that? All of Scottsdale. On those ones, yeah. Um, so you know what we do to, to figure that out is go on Monsoon, right? You get a count of the number of homes in a neighborhood, and then go on MLS and figure out how many of those homes sold in the last year, right? So number of homes sold divided by number of homes in the neighborhood equals your turnover rate. The other thing that we look at. Um, is what we call agent saturation. So we don't want to mail a neighborhood that's already getting hammered. If there's an agent in there that's doing 20 plus percent of all the listings, don't mail them. There's lower hanging fruit, right? You don't need to compete, don't start a war. 
Um, and you know, generally we always start with just listed, just sold. That's that's your best foot in the door to a neighborhood. So you know, if there's you know, if you're trying to figure out, okay, you know, what neighborhood should I even start looking at for turnover? Look at your recent listings, right? It doesn't matter if you sold the home three months, six months ago. You can still mail it just sold, right? It's a good way to get started. From there, you move into mailing market updates until you get the next one. So, like I said, we you know. Whenever we get a new listing, we always take a look at the neighborhood to see if it's a good target. We mail it adjust listed. Once it's under contract, we send it under contract. Once it's sold, we mail it just sold, and then we start hitting them with market updates on a monthly basis. So right here off of one listing, I've sent four mail pieces. Like I said, most of these pieces, let's be honest, they're not really looking at them. They're taking them, they're putting them in the trash the first few times. So as far as most homeowners are concerned, I just sold four houses, right? I mean, I am by far the expert by the time they got that monthly update because I sold four houses in the last month, right? The other thing is people are only checking their mail a couple of times a week. So half the time that they've now checked their mail, I've had my face in there, right? So you're, you're really establishing brand recognition. Quick question. Yeah. What about doing just listed on not your listing? Yeah, so it's it's a really good question. Um, you know, there's I'd say that's that's a topic we go back and forth with people on all the time. Um, my my main advice on it is disclose at the bottom. So what we'll do with if we're saying just listed, is we'll add to the bottom that you know data is courtesy of Armless and does not necessarily represent listings by us. So yes, just listed and just solds on other listings um, from everything that I've heard is totally fine to do. You, you just have to be careful with the disclaimer and don't use other people's photos is, is the main thing. How far away, excuse me, how far away from a listing do you typically? Yeah, so a lot of, you know, what we do is around this area that we personally do, right? And so we, because Arizona is so subdivision centric in the Valley, we focus on the subdivisions. And so a lot of it's gonna come down to um, kind of how many homes you want to mail, right? So if we sell a home in a subdivision and that subdivision has, you know, at least a couple hundred homes, then that's fine. We'll just mail a couple hundred in that subdivision. Um, you know, it's in areas like DC Ranch, that sort of stuff, where you have like the marketing names, right? You have, you know, what I call sub subdivisions. That's where you, when, you know, you can get a little weirder and start really tacking stuff on. Um, but, you know, it, it also comes down to, you know, what, what subdivisions are complementary. Right, so if there's you know a subdivision of million dollar condos and a subdivision of two hundred thousand dollar condos, we don't you know cross those streams. But if there's two subdivisions of two hundred thousand dollar condos next to each other, then yeah, we'll we'll combine them and we'll we'll mail together. I have a question about yeah. the previous slide. You were talking about um, you don't you don't want buyers. Does that mean you specifically? Like no, you absolutely want buyers. Um, you do not want to use direct mail to target buyers. You want to use direct mail to target listings. The reason for that, twofold. One, the listings bring the buyers on their own. Um, two, direct mail is a very expensive way to get buyers, right? There's just a lot less uh, expensive ways to, to get buyers, right? So um, when it comes to getting buyers, I always recommend that you get a lead gen website, right? You get a website that looks good, you can drive traffic to it, it gets people to sign up, right? So we have a website that uses what's called forced sign up, right? They view one property and then they're forced to sign up to view more properties. It's just a much less expensive way to get buyers. Listings are hard to get that way. So that's why direct mail is so effective when it comes to listings. So you get the side benefits that buyers come with listings, right? Um, but it's not it's not our bread and butter, right? It's not what we're really mining for. If we find it, cool. But it's, yeah. it's you can pick um, them up, but you always want to be marketing yourself as the listing agent because if you do, if you are looking for them, <laughs> people are going. To, buyers will use a listing agent, but people who want to sell their property are going to be less likely to want to use a buyer's agent. So there's some really cool things you can do with both Facebook and Google that a lot of people don't know about. So I go to Monsoon, right? I download my list. And then I take that list, I upload it into our Wise Pelican system, and I send a direct mail piece. I can upload that same list into Facebook, and I can target that list with Facebook ads. I can also upload that list into Google, and I can run Google retargeting campaigns to that same list of people. So 
you know, with Facebook, you could even take the artwork from the postcard you mail, and you could just make that your ad. You can take whatever photos, make it your ad. Um, one thing that's really cool to do is before you upload your list into Facebook as an audience, add your seller, right? So now your seller is seeing their property pop up on Facebook, and they know you're advertising it on Facebook, and that makes them really happy, <laughs> right? So if at the end of the day the property's not moving, it's not on you. You've mailed it, they're seeing Facebook ads pop up in their feed every day. It's, it's a, a good way to, to maintain. Did you tag them? Uh, no, not in that instance. Because it's an ad, right? So to your seller, you know, it's, it's just that you're running all these Facebook ads. So you, and actually, just so you know, Facebook, if you tag someone, so I don't know, did you guys ever boost posts? Anyone in here boost Facebook posts? So once you tag someone in a post, you can't boost it. So, yeah. When you said add your seller, you're adding them as your friend to your friends list? No. So when you take, you're going to take a mailing list out of Monsoon, right? So you're going to use Monsoon to pull a mailing list that you're going to use to mail postcards to, right? So you're going to have a spreadsheet. Before you upload that spreadsheet, so what we're going to want to do is take that spreadsheet, we're going to upload it to Facebook, and it's what's called a custom audience on Facebook. So now that I have this custom audience on Facebook, I can target Facebook ads to that custom audience. So let's say I post to my Facebook business page, you know, beautiful Optima Camel View condo for sale, and then I can go in and I can actually boost that post to everyone in that list that I just uploaded. Does it have to be a business page then? It does have to be a business page, yeah. So, so how now, does your ad get selling? I'm sorry? So how does your ad get selling? So what I do is add your seller to the list before you upload it into Facebook. So now they're part of that customer. But well, wouldn't they automatically be on the list if we did X, Y, Z subdivision? Mm -hmm. They might they be, they be, might not be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they already yeah. have a house there, so yes, they're yes. automatically on your list. So yeah, that's yeah. where you cut loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you just okay. want to make sure. Correct, correct, correct. So if it's not a subdivision that they're part of, yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. So you're boosting uh, a feed post rather than creating an ad? Yeah, you can do either. Either one is fine. With with both of them, you can use a custom audience. Yeah. And again, same thing with Google. You can do the same thing. And then I don't know if any of you guys use Google Display campaigns. Anyone? No takers. So you know how when you go to websites, like every website, there's ads in them, and it looks like you know the world is following you, and you know they know that you're looking at trips for Jamaica. So that's all done through Google. Those ads, it's like 95% or something of all ads are done through this Google platform. Um, you access of all of those. Ads.google.com. Is that part of your package? It is not. You don't really need me for it. Okay. Um, so it goes back to this whole thing, right? Direct mail is about sustainability. So I think probably everyone in this room, you know, works with two types of you know, investing clients if you, if you work with investors, right? There are those that are flipping houses and they're doing that because they wanna make a buck, right? That's what prospecting is. It's not a bad thing, it's awesome, everyone needs money, especially if you're starting out, pick up the phone, make some money, do whatever it takes to get money, right? But the, the real sustainable wealth building you know, comes from the purchasing of investment properties, right? It's you purchase stuff and you hold it, and that's what direct mail is, right? Direct mail is about building a sustainable business. So again, it's not that the, the former two are bad, it's just that if we really wanna build something sustainable, you need to start developing a brand. Is there anyone in here that when the market you know, has its next downturn is planning on leaving real estate? No. Yeah. That'll be you too? <laughs> yeah. So assuming that's the case, right, you wanna start building a brand so that you have something. All right, so again, our platform here that I'm gonna show you is Wise Pelican. And it is a very unique platform from anything that exists in direct mail. So it starts with the fact that the postcards are created online. And they're not created online using something like Canva or something that's made for just building online images. We actually start with InDesign templates, which for, you know, any of you that are familiar, InDesign is kind of the, the gold standard for any print design, right? And so we can make these templates as you know crazy as we want, we can perfectly match your brand, we can do everything, 
And then once we load that InDesign template into our system, it's completely editable by you, which I'll show you in a second. So we actually build those templates for you, or if you have a designer, they can send us their InDesign templates, but no one needs to learn any proprietary software to build these templates. Our campaigns are all tracked in real time. So um, I think you said you did direct mail for two years, right? One of the big things that we always have is, well, when did my campaign go out? When did it get delivered? And you're always wondering like, man, I just paid that person a thousand dollars and I have no idea. So what do you do? You start adding your grandma to the list, right? Your nephew, you know, and ask them, hey, did you get my campaign? All of our campaigns, you can actually go into our system and you can track the campaigns and see where they've been delivered, when they're getting delivered, and you can actually look at a map and see all the little percentages, and we'll show you that. The other thing that's cool for any of you guys that have a team is that our system is completely built for teams in the sense that once you create an account, you can add other people under your account and you can create postcards for them. So especially if like you have a team and you have an admin that creates postcards, um, they can go in and they can do it. And in fact, our system will automatically email the invoice to that agent whose postcard it is, right? So if I'm creating a postcard for Ryan on my team and he's supposed to pay for it, that system, the system's gonna automatically send him the invoice. So all I do is I go in and I upload his images, essentially. The other thing is we can perform variable data. So like I mentioned earlier, we don't do anything that we're just spraying stuff out. All of our campaigns, we want everyone to know that we're the expert in that subdivision, right? And that we know the market. So we always want to include recent sales. So let's take a look here at the system. So, yeah, you questions? Didn't come up. You didn't come up when I put in mycolleton.com. What came up is your LLC in Scottsdale. On Rancho Vista, is that where you're located? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where you're supposed to go? I'm sorry? Is that where you're supposed the to go? The website? Yeah, well, it takes you to your doing? LLC in Scottsdale. So I don't know what you mean. When she types in Wise yeah. Pelican, when she types in Wise Pelican, your LLC pops up. What she's yeah. saying. Like into like the search engine? Just pull up like uh, yeah. yeah, at any rate, yeah, I mean, you just put in. So at any rate, uh, so you're supposed to go to wisepelican.com slash. Yeah, so if you go to wisepelican.com slash MHG, this is the version that'll be specific. And if any of you guys want to pull out laptops, you can follow along here. Um, I'm actually going to go through the process of creating a template. Right? So if we go to wisepelican.com slash MHG and hit get started, it'll take us down to this create free account. So yeah, so to open up the system and to design postcards, all of that, it is completely free. So you guys can go in there and start playing with this. You can create your own templates, um, all of that. If you guys want us to create a template for you, we charge $79 to create templates. Um, and then once that template is loaded, you can use it as much as you want. So you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna click our create free account button. And then I'm gonna switch over and do this in our demo system so that I'm not creating false accounts. Okay, so I'm gonna call this John Johnny. And we'll make his business name the John Group. Is your Wi Fi in the room? Great. Password. Hi. It's really like so soon now. 
I have it. Where is that? It's the My Home Group uh -huh. that you want. And then the password is 636F636F6. You guys able to get to wisepelican.com slash mhg? Okay. So once we're there, we'll just hit get started. Scroll to the bottom. We'll get started. Scroll to the bottom and create free account. So here's one thing that I didn't mention. So I talked about that in the beginning we realized the fact that we needed to allow agents to create small batch runs of postcards and not charge them over a buck a postcard. So what I'm not going to show you today is our back end um, because you would absolutely hate me for doing it. But I, you know, I'll tell you what it does. Right. So we build a back end system that essentially takes everyone's orders and batches them all together so we can run one job each day with everyone's orders without having to go through all of the work of running each order individually. What does that mean to you? It means we do not care what size your job is because you're gonna be submitting the order just like you would on another site, right? But so with like Corefax, any of those companies, once you submit the order, they have a bunch of work they have to do on the back end. We don't. That's why we do all of our post postcards at 70 cents a pop. If you're doing big run quantities, you know, we're happy to talk about discounts for that. But I mean, you're not gonna find anything else that's, that's even close to 70 cents on what those small runs. What do you call big run quantities? Anything over 2,000. So yeah, if you're running over 2,000 and you're consistently mailing ten, more than 10,000 pieces a month, then you know, we can definitely talk about that. Um, you know, especially if you have teams and other people doing it. But yeah, all of our postcards, mm -hmm. 70 cents a pop. Is that out the door, 70 cents? Out the door, 70 Postcard. cents. Postage, mailing, printing. Six. six by nine. We do all of our postcards at six by nine. Yeah, we don't do any small postcards. Again, it's one of those things that's like, if it's not worth doing, right, it's not worth doing. So we only do jumbo, six by nine postcards. Full color. Yeah, full color, high gloss, both sides. 100 pounds, yeah. And you said we can upload our templates? Yes. Yeah, so for us to build a custom template for you is $79. Um, you will see that that's actually pretty immaterial here because you're only gonna do it once, so it really doesn't matter. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new account, right? So this is specifically coming from that page, thewisepelican.com slash mhg. That's how it knows that I'm a My Home Group agent. So that is important. Because when I create this account, as soon as I launch the account, it's going to log me in with all of these My Home Group templates. So these are all completely ready to go. And as long as you're using My Home Group branding and you're cool with that, then these are here. We have everything, we have just listed, just sold, right? So any of these just listed, we can use as a just listed, we can use as a just sold, or we can use as an under contract, and I'll show you how that works. Um, and then in addition, we have all of these market update postcards, right? So just depending on where you're mailing, how many you wanna do. So personally, I always just mail three. I really don't care. Sending people three recent comps is way more information than you actually have to, right? So I always say mail three. Why do we have all of these other ones? Well, because people ask them for ask us for them. So we have them, but I'd say stick to three comps. Yeah. Are those ones customizable? 
Yeah, everything you're gonna see is completely customizable. So you can swap out everything on here, and I'll show you that. Correct. Okay. Yes. Do you ever do a tempo with the black and red label instead of the white white label? Um. Yeah. I mean, we can do. I, I'll show you. Okay. That's a that's a great question. Yeah, because all my stuff is black and red. Okay. Yeah. So again, for seventy nine bucks, we can just create you exactly what you want. So. Um, yeah, or if you have the InDesign template, we'll just load that up for you. So let me show you how this works here. So let's let's pick one, right? Um, so we'll do this one here that has, let's do this one big photo. Can I ask a question? When you're doing the three versions just listed under contract, just so, are you changing anything except the words just listed? I'm changing the photos, I'm changing the words. I can change anything I want on here, and you are as I'll show you but I don't recommend it, right? So there's no need, right? Once you have this, stick with it. Have your main photo. Like I said, we really wanna have you know, consistency, but you can set it up the first time any way you want. Um, generally, I'd say if you're gonna make big changes, pay us 80 bucks, right? I mean, we'll, we'll just do it and from there you have it. Um, but so, okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna need is I need a mailing list, right? So we have, someone asked about uploading our, you know, do I, can I upload my list after I get it from Upstream? So yeah, so I'm gonna take a list that's on my laptop here. Test list, and let's do a small one here, 25 rows. I'm gonna <laughs> upload this list. So the first thing that the software is gonna do is it's gonna try to match all of your, co your columns here, right? So you'll see here, I have a column called first, I have a column called last, I have a column called address. Okay, we know that's our first name, our last name, our address. If it's coming out of Monsoon, it's not gonna know that because you're gonna have a few different addresses, right? You're gonna have the property address, you're gonna have the owner address. So you're gonna go in and you're just gonna select that from the drop down over the column, right? So it's, it's super simple. Um, subdivision, that's something that we're gonna use in the postcard for variable data, so I'll capture subdivision. Uh, formatted name, I'm not gonna use. So we have our first name, our last name, our address, address two, city, state, zip. That's all I really need, right, for, for what we're doing here. If we had variable data, so if we had actual comp data, we'd map that as well, but we won't do that for these purposes. We'll stick with just doing a just listed. So I can click here. I'm just gonna ignore all these other fields. The reason I show you guys all these fields is because in Monsoon, when you pull it down, you're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff, right, that you don't want. We just hit ignore on maps fields. We save it. Do we want to map them? Yes, we do. And so it's gonna save that list. We hit continue. So we have our little manage mailing list section. We can see here that we have 25 addresses uploaded. So let's go back to my templates and create a mailing list. <laughs> so we'll do Isabel. We'll just call this Isabel, select a customer. So this is where, this is something that most of you probably won't use. The customer will just always be you. And by default, you'll be in there when you create an account. But if you have a team and you want them to be able to track their campaigns, then you can add individuals, right? So that every time that you mail, you're actually making them pay for it and they can actually go in and track it. Speaking of which, it's an opportunity to resell also, right? You can sell postcards for something different. Um, at any rate, we can talk about that another time. But so I just have my one list in here, so that's Sunrise. So I'm gonna select that. We know there's 25 records. I'm going to click here and I'm going to edit my template. This is the moment you've been waiting for, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this address I have here, this is actually an uh, Optima address. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, right, so this is my first time opening up Wise Pelican. This is the template I know I want to use. Well, this is not me, right, so I'm going to click change image. And I'm just gonna swap out for someone else. We'll use Julie, one of our agents. And Julie is Julie. <laughs> so, you know, obviously Julie's last name is considerably, well, not obvious to you guys, but her last name is considerably longer. So I can change the size of my text, right? 
very close to my last name, make it William Bell. Right, so we can we can do all of that, right? So we can change all this stuff. Um, you know, we can get more exactly there, whatever we want. Um, gonna swap out the photo. This isn't the optima. Can we change these without the mailing list already under? You can. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. So you can change these and then save them as our own templates we want to use. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep, so now we have that, so we could go through here, swap out this little photo here. And so we would just swap out the logo. Oh, okay. So, yeah. right, so that's what I was saying. So, okay. for instance, okay. I can go in, I'll take that my home group logo, and... So I could actually swap that with, with our logo, right? Um, obviously it doesn't fit the same. But yeah, so you can go in and I might even have the black, my own group logo in here. Yeah, I won't go down the spiral. Um, but yes, we can, we can absolutely just swap them out. One more question. Yeah. So when you first do this the first time, you don't have our pictures loaded like you have Julie in there. So I just I, pulled that off my laptop. Oh, you don't. Yeah. yeah. So all I did was you I went just in pull it off our laptop. and I just yeah. up, I just uploaded it off of my laptop. Correct. Thank you. And that's the same with the logo and everything. So if you have the black yeah, version just saved on there, you would just change it. Yeah. Out that. So like here, I can even like I just pulled out another version of the cake or of the my home. it out, right? So if I didn't even want to have the my home group logo, I could have done that with the cake rank group. So whatever we need. We can swap out this image here. <coughs> Property photo. The kitchen. Upload it. Right? And so it's kind of interesting because you guys just watched me do this. But when I hit finished, It'll take a second to load the new one. You're gonna see how crazy this just got transformed, right? So, I mean, I really just took a template and while even demoing some additional stuff, we were what, like under three minutes or something that I just swapped that out. So once you have your template in here, I mean, you're moving through these things fast. So I'm gonna do a couple things. So one, I'm gonna save this template. So I just hit right here, save as new template, and I'll call this Julie MHG. <laughs> so select your font. So select your. So you want to select it? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to highlight and then scroll up a little? So you can there you go. Size. Okay. So we have that. We just saved. This is a new template. Um, maybe I want someone else to approve this. I can hit email proof. So it automatically knows that this is the person that I'm creating this for. So I can send that email, right? So they automatically get an email of it. The other thing that happens a lot of times is I started doing this and now I need to wait for the property to close, right? So I don't actually know the final price or I don't want to advertise the final price, whatever. So I'm also going to just save this as a draft order. So now I have this sitting here in my drafts. So here we are, I can go back in. I can resume that mailing. It'll automatically pull everything back in. Um, and then to your question on templates, right? I saved it as a template. So now when I go back to my template library, here it is, and I can use this again and again for as many mailings as I want. So you see why I say don't overthink the starting templates. We have all these my home group ones that are awesome for you guys if it fits and it's what you want to use. Otherwise, who cares about 80 bucks one time? Once you have the thing made, you'll be able to just do it as much as you want. Um, so that's you know really the the gist of, of how this system works. Um, it's you know painfully simple, honestly. 
Um, from there, right, so if I go back into my draft orders, <coughs> let's pull this one back up. I can resume it. So it already knows my list and all that. So the only thing that I have to do now is hit submit order. So as soon as I hit that submit order, if assuming it's me, in my email, I have an invoice that I can just pay with my credit card, right? So here it is, invoice just came through, why is Pelican LLC? Steep $17.50. And so now I go in and pay with my credit card. Here's what's crazy about this. We really just charge 70 cents a pop, which means this could be a real order. You can actually mail 25 homes and it'll be $17.50. It's a real thing. So this is not just a joke order. That could actually be a real order. And Why? It's we don't direct, care. Direct mail, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so. It, yeah, but because of that, it, it just doesn't matter to us. Um, if How does I, it go out? Is it like pre-sorted first class or? It goes out the same way all postcards do, which is, well, the same way 99% do, is pre-sorted standard class. Standard class. Yeah. Um, and what's, how long does it take to get them out? Like you place this order today, when would they? Within two days. Oh, okay. They mail, yeah. Um, obviously, that's that's constantly going up because we have our production constantly. You know, it, it just gets faster. Um, but especially in you know, if you're if you're mailing them, the ones that are within Arizona, right? So not your absentees, they're gonna get them. You know, much quicker than you know if they're in Florida or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, we we mail quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, the key here is that we batch all the jobs, right? So so it really doesn't matter to us if you want to mail two postcards, um, you can. Mail to we do not mail to Canada. Nope. United How do you batch them if they're all at different run sizes? Crazy. <laughs> it that is, is a mind bender. It is absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, I, it was something that for the longest time I was trying to achieve, and I got to the point I didn't think it was possible, and then my developers did manage to get it done. Um, it is extremely complex because not only are they different batch sizes but they're different templates and they have to be sorted in exactly the way that USPS wants it. So essentially what we do, and I'll keep this to about 30 seconds, is each night we send all of our orders through our system to USPS. They send us back a file that says this is the exact order and we send them all of the IDs for the templates and we actually generate every image one by one and then we put all of the images back together and print them. So it's, it's very, very complex, um, but it happens. So um, the other thing I guess that I'll show you too here that I haven't is, I'm gonna just go into our production environment and I will show you our mailings. So this is a mailing that we sent out. So this is our tracking system. So essentially I have a heat map, literally, a uh, heat map of the United States showing what's in transit, what's been delivered. So with any you know huge postcard runs, we have 9,900, right? Some are gonna get delivered quickly, some a little bit slower. So thus far, 83% of the scan by USPS is delivered. I can drill down on Arizona, right? I can see when these are actually delivered or sorted by zip code. If there's something that I'm like, man, where is that piece, right? None have been delivered. I can actually drill down on that specific mail piece and I can see where it's been. You as the owner or you as the, the customer? The cost customer, you guys, can, you guys can do this, right? So we can actually see, okay, it's actually been scanned in Phoenix now a couple times at different post offices. So it is actually moving through the system and will be delivered soon. It was just scanned yesterday. All right, so you don't have to worry about, you know, are these things lost, did they hit, whatever. You can actually go in and you can track these mail pieces. Yeah? We could create lists. Let's say there's three or four people that are using the same subdivision. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem for your system? No. Would it flag it? Like, say, me and her want to, like, I don't know her, but she wants to target my neighborhood. Like, would I know that she's targeting the same content? <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, so you have you know full ability to track. You can see where your pieces are getting delivered. You can see where they're, they're still missing, uh, waiting to get delivered. And you can actually see them through the postal system. What other questions? We are talking tracking. How do you track? How do we track them? What, what do you track actually? Yeah, so it's funny. I don't know why other companies don't do this because it's actually provided by USPS. Uh, as mail moves through the system, the barcodes on each postcard are actually scanned over and over and over again. And USPS, if you know how to read the feed, you can actually take their raw data feed and you can convert it into real information. So we actually get a feed from USPS every hour of where all of our postcards are in the mail system. The process of mailing, actually, this is what you're talking yeah, I mean, we're processing the actual postcards getting, we're tracking the postcards actually getting delivered, right? So if I look at something that's going to Georgia, right, and I open this up. Um, it's kind of like a package. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so we can see here, right, to go to Georgia, this has been scanned in Colorado twice, right? Which is where Colorado and Denver, they have a huge sorting facility. So this is actually tracking the postcard, you know, just got scanned in, in Colorado. Do you provide mailing lists of where are in Georgia? Yeah, so we can help you with that, and we sell mailing lists, but if you're a realtor in this area, right, Armless provides you with access to Monsoon, and Monsoon, yeah, you can download know. them for free. Different, it's not, Monsoon doesn't deal with divorces, doesn't deal with probates, all kind of Yeah, lists. so we can, I mean, yeah. there are certain lists with them. That's where Zach comes in. If you want to, if you want to get weird, well, I guess yeah. <laughs> just, just reach out and we can, we can yeah. figure, we'll figure out a way to, yeah. to get that, to get, find that target audience. Yeah. You want to get detailed. Absolutely. We're weird. Yeah. Zach, Zach will get as weird as you want. Yeah. <laughs> We've gotten pretty weird over the last yeah. six months or so. We, we have some, some crazy requests all the time. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of different data sources out there. So yeah, we can absolutely help you with that. Um, with that being said, if you don't want to pay us for the lists, the other thing you can do is go to Title. Um, you know, if you don't have a Title company, we'll you know gladly recommend one that we know will pull lists for you. Uh, there you go. So, yeah. So you know, in, in Arizona, there's not a ton of reason unless you you really want to get crazy to to pay us for lists, just because Title companies will do it for you. You have Monsoon. There's so many other resources. But if there's there's something that's super specific you can't get from title, we can get it for you. Yep, absolutely. Does Zach have a business card? <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll hand out some business yeah, cards. Yeah, we'll here. we'll get you some contact information. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's really the gist of it. Again, you know, you can create a free account. So go in, create an account, play with it, yeah. So if you know InDesign and have access to InDesign do you literally just upload that InDesign file or is there some sort of conversion? We have to upload system? it for you, okay. but if you just send it to us, we'll just upload it yeah. for you. Yeah. But it is literally an InDesign file. And just looking at your examples of where the indicias are and all that build around that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So what's on the back? I, like, there's one. So these templates. Yeah. These templates are the front, so what's on the other? If you click on them, you'll be able to see um, on the, the back side of them. Oh. So yeah, each Usually each there's like another headshot with like a bio, and then there's room for the, the barcode for USPS. Yeah, so you can see here. <coughs> okay. So yeah, you just go in and play with it, and we can mix and match. <laughs> Check it out. What's the subdivision and test mean? Exactly. What's that? Yeah, you just need to be saying. Is it just the same? So anything that's in um, those two arrows, that's going to be variable data. So that's going to refer back to your list. So if you had um, a specific subdivision that was referred to on that address, yeah. it's the system's going to automatically insert the subdivisioning in there. And print it. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, so let me kind of show you what it looks like if you select a list. So. So don't make it something nasty because your clients get money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the system, yeah, the system. The is, uh, I think it has a. Uh, it looks further. 
Um, yeah, so if I select a template that has variable data in it, and again, this is definitely a more advanced feature, so it's something that we would help you use the first time. If I select a template that has variable data in it, it automatically looks at my mailing list to see if I have a column that matches it. So I just selected one that does, so it automatically knows here, hey, you have this variable data called subdivision, and I see you have a column that matches it. So I want to use that to populate the subdivision and everything here. So it's pretty cool. Um, and you know, that's definitely, if you're doing large mailing, something that we recommend, because again, you really want to target makes people feel like they're being targeted more exclusively, even though you're mailing a few thousand people. Well, doesn't it test variable data? It says test under subdivision over here, right? right. Oh, that was Oh, that me. was actually you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We were playing around with some things earlier. Yeah. We'll have to come up with something. No, you don't have to. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Just yeah, and I mean, again, anything can be, right? It's just we go in and we edit it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you have the ability to edit as much or as little as, as you want. But, you know, you can take this, you could create your whole own, right, I can move any of this stuff. Um, I just wouldn't recommend it, it's too much work, right? Let a designer do it. Just like anything else, if you try to design it in a program. If I try to design this stuff, it's gonna look awful. Well, it would look nice, it would be nice template. Because oh, so, yeah. you didn't design it. Yeah, because I didn't design it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you know you can go on, you can play with all these templates, they're all in there. Um, if you guys do want custom templates, uh, because I do need a call to action, right? So if you do decide, hey, I wanna get a custom template because I have a brand or I have something exactly that I want, go on to our wisepelican.com slash MHG, right? And pay for a $79 template. And if you do it today, we'll create both of your templates for you. So we'll create your just listed, just sold under contract and then also your market update template. So you'll get a free template. So if you think about doing it, do it today. Um, but you know, the other thing too is, look at the ones that are on there first, because they're, you know, they're good looking templates too. And if you're, you're mailing under the MHG brand, then there's, there's not a lot of reason to, to have your own created. Any other questions? Save it and go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Just save it as a draft. Yep. So hit finish. Go back up. <coughs> yes. And then, yep, just save draft order. There you go. And now it will show up if you just start mailing. Yeah, so that is the extent of this, um, unless anyone <laughs> has any other questions. Mm -hmm. I have business cards I'll give you guys. Um, Can you have the sign-in sheet up front? Uh, yeah, it's right okay. Kelly just texted me if anyone has it signed up. If you so this is me, shoot me an email. email. If you shoot him an email, yeah. it'll get relayed to me. So kind of funny, we don't normally, right, all of our business has always been <laughs> in other states. So. It's the, the first time that you know business cards have actually been brought out in a <laughs> sales capacity. You guys are a first. Yeah. Yeah, so really appreciate everyone's time. Um, definitely play with it. We'll stick around for a little bit in case you guys have any questions and you just want to play with building some templates. And if we start to do one and we get into trouble, what happens? You know, if, we're, if we <coughs> sign up and we get in and something wonky, what do we Shoot us an email. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll help you out. We're happy to help. Um, but yeah, just, you know, again, remember you always have the save draft order button right here. So you can always say whatever you're doing as a draft. And we can always then go in and, and take a look at, at what you're doing. Um, and then, you know, you can always save it as a template also.